We have all had painful events in our lives that can lead to depression, anxiety, addiction, or broken relationships. But here's a secret. It is not about what happened to us that causes suffering. It's the stories we believe about ourselves. Join us as we shine light on how to rewrite our stories, avoid the shadows of shame, and travel along the pathway to joy, love, and connection. It's the Finding Peace Podcast with your host, Amazon best-selling author, Troy L. Love. When I was a kid, one of my favorite places to visit was the Science Museum. There were all kinds of wonderful things to touch and play with and experience as I was there. But one of the things that fascinated me the most was the pendulum. There was this long cable that was two or three stories high, and it would come down from a really high place, and then there was a ball on the bottom, like a bowling ball or something, with this little pointer thing on the bottom. And it would swing back and forth, and there was a circle on the ground that it would go from one side to the other. And if you stood there long enough, you would notice that the pendulum would move. As it's swinging back and forth, it would move from maybe the north to south position and then slowly it would move to west to east, back and forth. And I can't tell you what it was about that that was so fascinating to me. But I could stand there for a long time watching it going back and forth, which for a kid who has some ADHD tendencies, that's saying something. I wondered if it would ever slow down. I wondered if it would ever stop. And apparently it does. I guess you have to push it. But there's something about the gravitational pull of the earth and the way that it works that it just swings and slowly arches across the way back and forth. And I loved watching that. When I was getting my master's degree, part of my internship was spending some time at Gateway Rehabilitation Center, where we worked with individuals who were struggling with drug and alcohol addiction. And there was a therapist there by the name of Jean, and she she told me her philosophy. She said, that she believes that everybody is on this spectrum and we have the capacity to be wonderful and good. And the person who is wonderful and good, they are on this one side of the spectrum, but there's the other darker side of the spectrum as well. And she said that for as good and wonderful as you are, you also have the capacity to do very dark things. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting theory. I don't know if it is possible to research that. And then I just finished listening to the Audible original Henrietta and Eleanor, which is an adaptation of The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, where Robert is looking at that same concept of the dualness of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that maybe the dark side of ourselves and the light side of ourselves. And as you know, if you have listened to me or know me at all, you know that I love Star Wars and the concept of the force and there's a dark side and there's a light side. There is this parallel between the light and the dark. And as I thought about the pendulum, I thought, that swinging back and forth. As I think about that pendulum, what I'm really looking at is we have this capacity, really, to be able to stand in our truth, to stand in our light, to know who we are, and we also can struggle with the shadows. Those shadows of shame can really pull us down. I had a client the other day who asked me this question. She said, you know, I can see how the judge isn't very helpful for me, and I can see how the impotent one isn't very helpful to me, but I'm really not wanting to get rid of the rebel. 
And I said, really, tell me more about that. And she said, well, the rebel stands up for me. The rebel helps me take control of the things that are going on in my life and, and helps me feel powerful. And I don't want to give that up. And I said, oh, I, I understand what's going on here. And that leads us to the question of the podcast. Why do I want to do something about the shadows, whether that is to get rid of them or to silence them? Why do I want to get rid of them when they seem to sometimes help me in difficult situations? Let me explain a little bit about how the shadows work. They are also on a pendulum as well. There are three different spectrums upon which the shadows operate. And the first spectrum is the appraisal spectrum. On one end is the judge. So if you can imagine the pendulum swinging over to the judge, the judge is demanding perfection all the time. It's telling you that you're not measuring up, that you're not perfect, that you're not doing it right, that you need to try harder. It is pointing out to you all of your flaws and defects and measuring your worth based on these arbitrary things that the judge is picking up on. If the pendulum swings to the other side of the appraisal spectrum, it's the royal. And the royal says that you're better than everybody else. It's the same appraisal. You're better than everybody else. You don't need to pay attention to your flaws and defects. People need to recognize that you are so important, that you matter so much. Don't they know who you are? You are entitled to special treatment. And so you can see that as that pendulum swings from judge to royal, back to judge, back to royal, it can be very, very confusing for us to actually find the truth. Because within five seconds, we can be hearing messages of the judge, and then we can also feel messages from the royal. For example, I was coming home, I had my family in the car, and I was turning left. And I turned too sharply and almost hit another car. And in that moment, my royal said, well, they were driving too close to the middle of the road. They should have been nearer to the curb. So it's their fault that you almost hit them. And I actually said it out loud. And then my wife said, uh, Troy, that's, where's your ownership in that? You were driving like a crazy person, which is actually true. My judge on one hand is saying, you drive like a crazy person. And the royal is saying, they, they should get out of your way. So you hear the difference between those two? And somewhere in the middle is the truth. Maybe they were driving closer to the middle, but I have ownership and I have the ability to take my part. But that's an example of how both of those showed up at the same time. The second pendulum is about image. I need to be seen. I need, to, it's about what people see about me. And so on one side of the spectrum, the pendulum swings over to the politician. And the politician says, you need to be seen as amazing. No one can see your flaws. No one can see your defects. If you have made mistakes, you got to cover that up. You got to lie about it. You got to hide it. Because if you want people to vote for you, if you want people to like you, you, got, you have to not let them see that. So that politician is sharing that message about cover it up, don't let people know, don't show anybody that you have these flaws. And then the pendulum can swing to the other side of the spectrum, which is the martyr. The martyr wants people to feel sorry for you. And the way that it does it is it convinces you that your needs don't matter and that everybody else's needs matter more than yours. And as long as they can see that you are making the sacrifice for them, then you can find some value. So on this side, the martyr is saying things like, It's okay that you that you, you your friends went out without you because... 
You just, they're just happy. And make sure that you send them a text and say something like, I hope that you all have the most wonderful time while I sit home here in front of the television and do nothing. That is something that the martyr would encourage you to do. The martyr is telling you that your needs don't matter, but as long as you're serving the greater good, then at least maybe you can find some sense of worth. And it's really important if you let other people know just how much of a sacrifice you're making. That's what the martyr says. The third spectrum is about power. And as the pendulum swings to one side, it's the rebel. And the rebel was the one where the client didn't want to get rid of it because it does contain a sense of power. The rebel says you can do whatever you want. Don't pay attention to the consequences. Don't pay attention to who it might hurt or how it might cause harm. As long as it's bringing you pleasure or joy or giving you a sense of power, then you can do it. Forget about the rules. Forget about the guidelines. Forget about the boundaries. You just do whatever you want. For a lot of us who struggle with addiction, that's really the voice of the addict right there. Like, forget. Forget about your values. Forget about whatever you have been working on. Forget about sobriety. You need this. And then the pendulum can swing to the other end, which is the impotent one. And the impotent one is the voice that tells you that you don't have any power, that it's never going to get any better. No matter how hard you try, things are always going to be miserable and depressing and horrible. So you can hear how the rebel is like, screw this, I'm going to go do whatever I want. You know, even if the world is falling apart, I'm going to go do what I want. And then it swings over to the other side of the pendulum, which is about the impotent one who's just saying like, you can't, you're never, it's always going to be awful. So you can hear how those six shadows can really hijack our life. I'm imagining being that that little boy in the science museum and watching the pendulum swing from judge to martyr to rebel to royal to politician to impotent one, just back and forth. And honestly, that's sometimes how it feels in my brain, in my head, when they are in control, when they are out. So there's a key question that we ask ourselves when we are dealing with them, and that is, why are you here? We ask each one of the shadows, why are you here? What is it that you are doing? Why are you telling me these things? And I'll give you the answer so you don't really have to think that hard. They're here because they're trying to manage pain. Something has activated one of your attachment wounds of loss, neglect, rejection, abandonment, betrayal, or abuse. And now they're out trying to help you deal with that. So as the client was sitting with me saying, well, I don't want to get rid of the rebel because the rebel does empower me. I said, oh, all right, you're confusing the shadow for the light. And just like Jean had explained, we have this dark side, which are the shadows, and then we have the light side. Now, an important distinction is the shadows are not you. The shadows are defense mechanisms that your brain and your body has developed over time to manage pain, but they're actually not you. Who you are is a being of light, a being of value, a being of purpose, a being of love. And sometimes the shadows have hijacked our lives so much that we don't actually see that. But if we can really tap into that light, then we can find our strength. Douglas Gillette and Robert L. Moore wrote a book, particularly for men, called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, Rediscovering the Archetypes of Mature Masculinity. I love the concepts. They're Jungian in nature, and I'm a Jungian therapist. It's all about the archetypes. And they explain that we have, even you don't have to be a man to get value from their book. You just have to change the words a little bit. The king is the noble part of ourself. The king is, if you think about back in the Middle Ages, the king, a good king, took care of his kingdom, made sure that all of his people in his kingdom were taken care of, that they were thriving, 
that they had food and clothes and protection. And so to the, the modern day term for that would be a, a leader, a good leader who has stewardship over either a family or a business and knows that there's responsibilities that need to be done. And so this leader makes choices for the betterment of the company or the betterment of the organization and with love and compassion and wisdom. That's the energy of the king or the leader. The second is the warrior. And the warrior is the part that fights for what is right, that defends truth, defends what they believe in. Now that is very different than the rebel. The warrior recognizes that his or her choices have consequences. And so they learn how to master their skills. And they come from a place of love and light when they are protecting things. They don't come from a place of power and control. And that's the difference between the rebel and the warrior. Warrior is standing up for what is true and does recognize that there are consequences and consciously makes choices that are for the better good of the situation. Not selfish. They're not selfish choices. They are opportunities to help or defend something that's at risk. The next archetype is the magician. When they're using the Middle Ages example, we have like Merlin, who is the, the mentor, the, the magician who helps King Arthur and helps him understand what's going on. The magician today is like the mentor, the person who has been around for a while, who has seen a lot, who's had a lot of wisdom and experience in their life, that knows how to use the tools and trades and technology to make things happen. And this part of ourself, this mentor, helps us use wisdom and creativity to guide our path to help us stay on track and continue to make choices that are aligned with our value system. And the last of the four, not in any particular order, is the lover. And the lover is the part of ourselves that enjoys life, experiences the sensuality of seeing a sunset and appreciates the vivid colors as the sun is going down. It loves to play and laugh and be held and to hold others and to create and use their talents and gifts. So each one of those is an aspect of ourself. And we could be stronger in one of those four archetypes than another, but the goal really is to become balanced in each of them. You can build your muscles in each of those areas as well. You can learn how to become a better leader. You can learn how to use wisdom to guide your choices. You can learn how to stand up for yourself and others in a healthy way. You can learn how to do those things. When we can connect with that part of ourself, that is the light side to the shadow. We can tap into that energy and help us make choices that are aligned with our value system or we can go back to the shadows and let them hijack our life. And the, and the truth is that every time the shadows show up, it diminishes our light. It diminishes our worth because they are operating on the system that there is something wrong with you and that you're not enough. The light side, the, the leader, the warrior, the mentor, and the lover are operating from a place of you have worth. You have gifts and talents and abilities, and let's tap into that energy within ourselves to be able to use those gifts and talents and energy to bless the world. If you would like to learn more about these archetypes or to do a deeper dive into the shadows of shame and understanding the Finding Peace model, I wanted to let you know that we have a Finding Peace online weekend workshop coming up September 4th through the 6th of 2020. This is replacing what we normally do every year, which is the Finding Peace retreat. But because of COVID, we had to make some changes and we've transferred it to an online Zoom platform. And I understand for many of us, especially me as a therapist, being online for hours and hours of day is actually mentally and physically and spiritually exhausting. 
we have created this workshop to replace that because some of the participants were really looking forward to having an opportunity to do some of their work. And we actually had canceled it in April and rescheduled in September, hoping that that would be enough time. And it just wasn't. I didn't want to put it off any longer. So we created that and we are opening it up. We still have some seats left. Are capping it at 30 because I want to be able to give you as much interactive and one-on-one -on -one attention as possible. And I want to let you know that the workshop is going to be very interactive. It's not death by PowerPoint. I might show a slide or two, but it's really going to be more interactive. You are going to be doing the work. I'm going to be guiding you, providing support, interacting and talking with you. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I will put a link to that in the show notes, or you can go to findingpeaceacademy.com and click on the online workshop link, which is right on the front page of the website, findingpeaceacademy.com. I hope that you are able to connect with your light inside and that you can recognize that you have gifts and values and truths that are intended to bless the world in whatever capacity that looks like for you. And I'd be excited to hear how you use your leadership energy, your warrior energy, your lover energy, and your mentor energy to impact the world for good. So you could send me an email at, at Troy at TroyLLove.com and let me know. Or if you have questions or comments about the podcast, I'd also love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day, and may you be at peace always. You've been listening to the Finding Peace podcast. If you loved the show or want to ask a question, let us know by going to TroyLLove.com. There, you can also learn about the Finding Peace 5-Day Challenge. Remember to subscribe to this podcast so you won't miss the next episode. And if you are listening on iTunes, please give us a five-star rating. It helps other people find this podcast more easily. Thank you for spending part of your journey with us. Copyright Finding Peace Consulting.